the official U.S. Presidential Cancer Panel report from the National Cancer Institute on reducing environmental cancer risk. What can we do now? That's what we need. We know there's a problem, but what can we do about it? First, to review, 1.5 million new cases of cancer a year, men, women, and children, and a half million deaths. With a growing body of evidence linking environmental exposures to cancer, the public is becoming increasingly aware of the unacceptable burden of cancer resulting from environmental and occupational exposures that could have been prevented through appropriate national action, especially children who are considered more vulnerable than adults to increase cancer risk from virtually all harmful exposures. Unfortunately, the report concludes the grievous harm from this group of carcinogens has not been addressed adequately by the National Cancer Program. The American people, even before they are born, are bombarded continually with myriad combinations of these dangerous exposures. The panel urges you, Mr. President, most strongly to use the power of your office to remove the carcinogens and other toxins from our food, water, and air that needlessly increase health care costs, cripple our nation's productivity, and devastate American lives. Strong words, but what can we do? They don't give much dietary guidance. Basically, they just say choose organic and free range. Exposure to pesticides can be decreased by choosing, to the extent possible. Food grown without pesticides and chemical fertilizers, and washing conventionally grown produce to remove residues. Similarly, exposure to antibiotics, growth hormones, and toxic runoff from livestock feedlots can be minimized by eating free-range meat raised without these medications if it's available. Avoiding or minimizing consumption of processed, charred, and well-done meats will reduce exposure to the carcinogenic heterocyclic amines and uh, polyaromatic hydrocarbons. Unfortunately, they don't go into specifics in terms of you know, which types of fruits and vegetables and which types of meat are the most contaminated. I assume they avoided going into detail so as to not to you know, upset any particular agricultural sectors, but it does diminish the report's practical usefulness. Thankfully, though, there's a large body of new evidence now in which thousands of different food samples have been tested to help guide our day-to-day -day grocery store decisions, which we will cover next.